Hello Python fans! Uh, today we're going to dive in and start learning how to make games using the Python language. We're going to use the popular library Pygame. Uh, it's uh, built around uh, SDL2, which is the simple direct media layer. It's a way to access low-level graphics from inside Python. It's a C library wrapped inside of a Python. Uh, so we're going to build a game. We're going to start with Snake. It's the simplest game we can start with, and it will allow us to do a game without having to worry about any art assets whatsoever. Everything that we're going to draw to the screen can be drawn by Pygame itself. So I like to use the PyCharm IDE. Uh, it comes with a lot of really cool features, and uh, we're going to call this Snake Tutorial, and I'm going to build it using a virtual ENV. Uh, this is a great way to separate the dependencies of the project from the rest of your system. Um, I like to use pip env as well, but uh, I run into some problems because of the version of um, Pygame that I have to install due to running on a Mac. So uh, we're going to go ahead and create the project here and pull everything into view. Uh, this will take a second to create. It sets up a new virtual environment folder and everything you need in here. Um, there's also some really cool features of PyCharm. Uh, this is the free version that I use. You don't need anything more than that. Uh, for tutorials or anything. So um, go ahead and feel free to poke around. You'll see there's a VENV file. That's where all of your virtual environment is actually set up. And then the main.py uh, gets generated by default by uh, PyCharm. Uh, this comes with just a couple of really basic uh, functions in it, the main function and then uh, just a hello world function for you. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the terminal. Uh, as I said, PyCharm comes with a lot of really cool built-in features, one of them being uh, the local terminal so that you don't have to actually leave the environment to go operate outside, okay? So here you can see we're in the snake tutorial directory. I can use this like uh, a regular terminal out on the rest of my system, but all I really need to do here is install Pygame. That's the only dependency we need for today. So we're gonna do pip install Pygame equals, um, if you are not running on a Mac, you don't have to worry about the equals here. You can just stop here and say pip install Pygame. It'll install uh, 192 is the version as of uh, this writing that it installs by default. But what we're going to do is, because I'm on a Mac, there's a, a pretty nasty little bug uh, that causes the windows to show up, but nothing actually gets drawn to the screen. So... Uh, to fix that, I have to install 2.0.0.dev6. Um, there are newer versions of the dev branch, but I don't like to be on the bleeding edge because it can cause all kinds of weird breakages. This version's pretty stable, so I'm going to use it. Go ahead and hit enter. Um, and, oh yeah, it helps if you actually type the right thing in here, and if you say equals equals, uh, so that it knows what version it needs to install. There you go. Uh, so now we have Pygame installed. If you come up here to the virtual ENV, you can actually see uh, it is included. Pygame here is included in the site packages. So we know everything's there. It all worked as it's supposed to do. So let's jump straight into the code then, okay? Um, so we're going to go ahead and delete everything up here uh, at the top of this file. And we're going to delete all these uh, comments out. We don't need any of this stuff. Um, all we need to leave here is the if name equals equals underscore underscore main. Uh, this is our entry function, okay? Um, and then uh, don't worry about the error here. We're going to replace it really quick. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to import the library that we need, which in this case is just Pygame, okay? That's the only thing we need. Uh, and then make sure to leave two blank lines before defining our first function, which isn't going to do much. All we're going to do is say def run, and then we're going to type in pass. Uh, pass is a great little keyword. Um, it allows us to define functions and classes and leave them blank for now and tell them we will actually create this later, so don't worry about it. Okay, and then all we're going to do here in the main function is call run. Okay, we can save this. If you want to run this now, you'll see what this does. It's going to do absolutely nothing, but 
at least you know that your code is still running because everything comes up as you expect it to. Okay. Um, we see that Pygame actually loaded here. Uh, this is what happens at the start of any Pygame application. We see that Pygame was imported and there's a hello message uh, with a link to pygame.org. So we know everything's working. There's nothing else here. That's great. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is uh, now we're going to say pygame, oh, pygame dot quit. Now, uh, what this is doing is this is shutting down Pygame cleanly after we're done using it, because now the very first thing we're going to do in the run function is we're going to say pygame dot init. OK. After this, uh, we're going to do a couple of things to set up our main window and actually display it. Uh, that's the very first thing we're going to do. Let's go ahead and create a clock. We're not going to need this immediately right now, but this will help us very soon. So we're going to set up a screen. The screen is a display and we need to set the mode. Now we're going to set the size and that's the only thing we're going to worry about here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in a size array or a size tuple, sorry, and say screen width and screen height. Now you'll notice those have red squiggly lines because we haven't defined them yet. So let's go ahead and create a section up here. Uh, do the bang and say we're going to call this section global variables. Here we're going to say screen width. Uh, and let's pick something small and square just because it'll be easy to deal with. 480 by 480. It sounds like a great size here. Okay. So we've got a, a screen definition here. Uh, then uh, let's set a title. If you don't do this, it's fine, but I always like to set the title of the window so I know. I'm going to call this Snake Pie Game Example. You can put whatever you want in there, um, but this is a good thing to do. Then the next thing you have to do for a um, for a pie game is you have to define a surface to draw on. Okay, surface equals pie game dot surface. So this is our surface class. All right, and we're gonna pass it in the size of the screen. Okay, so this creates a drawing surface the exact same size as our display area on uh, the screen that we're setting up. Okay. And then we have to oh, surface dot convert. All right. So we're going to convert that screen uh, to run in the resolution of the monitor. So there we go. Um, that sets up a really, really basic surface, but right now, if you run this, nothing will happen. Okay. Now we actually have to draw it and draw it constantly. So what we're going to do is now we're going to set up the basic game loop. Now, um, you can do something really basic and just do a wall true and that will work. Uh, but we're going to do something a little bit different here. Uh, we're going to set up a variable called running. What this will allow us to do is when the application actually exits, we can break out of the game loop and shut everything down cleanly. Okay. So running equals true. And then we'll do while running. And then the very first thing we're going to do here is set up a way for us to shut down the game cleanly. Okay. So we're going to say for event in pygame.event.get. Uh, what we're doing is any event that gets dispatched, any key press, any mouse click, anything like that gets put onto this event queue. And we're going to grab every event off of that event queue. Okay. So everything that's happened since the last time this loop ran is stored on this event queue. 
And then inside of here we say if event dot type equals pygame dot quit. What this means is someone clicks the little red X button up in the top. And so we want to be able to handle this and actually do it correctly. All we're going to do is say running equals false. That's it. That's all we have to do there. Then we're going to do an elif event.type equals pygame. Oops. It helps if I spell things right, doesn't it? Key down. So we're looking for a key press. And then the key we want to know is pygame.k escape. So if someone hits the escape key, we're going to say running equals false. That's it. That's all we have to do. Those by them, uh, those right there will allow us to break out of this uh, continuous while loop. So we can break out of the game loop. Now, let's actually set up a window and draw it. The very first thing we're going to do in here is tick. Now, we can set the tick manually here, or we can set it as a global variable at top. At the top, I like to set it as a global variable called FPS. It's not really the frames per second. It's actually a little bit. It's like ticks per second. Um, but uh, we're going to call it FPS. And I'm going to define up at the top FPS equals 10. So we're going to say 10 ticks per second. Uh, this will make sense once you actually see the game running. You'll, you can play with this number, change it to larger and smaller, and see how it affects the, the gameplay. Okay. So we're going to say clock.tick. And then uh, the next piece is to actually draw uh, everything that we need to draw. Okay, so our surface right now is blank. There's nothing on it, but we still have to draw it to the screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to say screen dot blit and blit is a really fancy way of saying draw. And we're going to draw the surface and we have to give it a coordinate we want to start drawing at. Now we're going to draw at the top left, which is zero zero in Pygame. Top left of the screen is zero zero and it goes down and to the right. Okay, that's the positive numbers. Positive down, positive to the right. Uh, the very next thing we need to do is pygame.display.update. All right, if everything worked as we expect it to work, all we have to do is hit run. And look at that. Now we have a black screen. Super, super exciting, isn't it? All right. <laughs> I know. You guys are like, oh, come on. I wasted all that time drawing a black screen. All right. Uh, let's actually draw something on the screen now, though. Okay. Um, I know what we can do. Let's let's make it pretty. Let's draw a little uh, a, a grid on the background. Okay. Uh, the grid will help us be able to know when to turn our snake. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up a new function. We're going to say def draw grid. And we need to pass it a surface to draw on. Okay. And then uh, we're going to uh, pretty pretty straightforward what we're going to do. We're, we're going to create a nested for loop. We're going to say for every Y in a range and for every X in a range. And then we're going to check, is this an even or an odd square? Um, so to do this, we need to create um, a way to represent grid height and grid size. Now I picked an arbitrary number. Um, I'm going to say grid size is equal to 20 pixels, uh, just because that allows us to get 24 grid squares across 24 grid squ squares down. Okay, a 24 by 24 playing grid. Seems like a good round number with a 480 by 480 screen. Then we're going to set up uh, the grid width, and we're going to set that to screen width divided by grid size. And then we're going to set up grid 
height equal to uh, screen height divided by grid size. What this allows you to do is as long as you create your screen width and screen height as a multiple of the grid size, you'll get a nice even number of uh, grid pieces wide and grid pieces tall. Okay, This just makes it much easier to do the calculations later when we start figuring out where to draw the snake and where it's actually going to end up. Now, while we're up in this part of the file, I'm going to declare a couple more global variables that we're going to need later. Um, the first we're going to need is we need to know what the center is. Uh, we, we want to know this because your character, your snake, will always start in the center of the screen, in the center grid square. So all we have to do is go uh, screen width divided by 2 and create a, a position tuple here with screen height. Oops. Uh, divided by two. There you go. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Now you that finds the center of the screen because you take this the width divided by two and the height divided by two. That puts you smack dab in the middle. Because of the way that we draw uh, rectangles, we're always going to start them at the top left by declaring this point at exactly the midpoint. You're going to go to position 240 by 240 and draw a square down into the right of that point. So you'll be, you'll start in the, your uh, top left corner of your snake will start in the very center of it. It won't be like the, the middle of the snake will be in the center of your board. So that's an important distinction here. Then we're going to declare a couple of directions that we're going to use later. Uh, these are just uh, shortcuts when we actually get to, uh, Moving the uh, moving the snake around the screen, we're going to declare up, down, left, and right. Okay, and then I like to declare one more, which is stop. Okay, zero zero. Okay, now let me explain these. Uh, if I just throw these up here, you might be a little bit confused. If you remember um, what we said, down is moving in a positive direction on the screen, and to the right is moving in a positive direction on the screen. So if you look at these, these are tuples, x, y tuples, and up is 0, negative 1, which means negative 1 is moving towards the top of the screen, which is up, because it goes positive moving down which is what the next line is. Down is 0, 1. We're moving down. Left, as I said, is negative 1, and right is 1. Oh, look at that. I made a mistake. Uh, 1, 0 there. Okay. Uh, so your x, x of 1 means you're moving to the right, and x of negative 1 means you're moving to the left. Okay. hope that makes sense. Uh, if you have any questions, drop it in the comments, uh, or sit, uh, shoot me an email and let me know. Okay. All right. So let's get back to actually drawing our grid here. Uh, now that we have all of these uh, convenience uh, variables defined at the top, we can actually pretty easily draw a colored grid. So we're going to say for every Y position in a range, uh, and we're going to start at 0, and we're going to end at grid height. Uh, you notice there that I cast it as an integer. Uh, this is because the grid height, the way we calculated above, uh, we do screen height divided by grid size. If either of these numbers isn't divisible by the other, you'll end up with a float here. And um, a range doesn't work well with a float being passed in. We want to always pass in an integer. So what this will do is it'll floor the, the float down to the closest integer. All right. Then uh, we're going to, as I said, this is a double nest, uh, a nested loop. We're going to say for each x in a range, and we're going to move from zero to, again, we're going to cast it as an integer. We're only going to have to cast a couple of things as, as integers. Uh, because of the way Python works, uh, it's pretty loose with the typing. Uh, 
and there are several cases where we want it to be strongly typed when we pass it into things. This is one of those cases. Now we need to create an, an if conditional in here. So what we're going to take is we're going to say if x uh, plus y and we're going to use the modulo 2 equals 0. Uh, this means uh, it is divisible by two, so this is the even squares. Okay, even square positions. We're going to create a rectangle uh, or shorthand for R, and we're going to say pi game dot rect x times grid size and y times grid size. And then I'm going to pass in grid size by grid size. All right, what we've done here is we've defined um, two tuples inside of the rect. The first tuple is going to be the position on the screen. So we're moving by 20 pixels for every x and for every y. We're moving uh, to the right and we're moving down. Okay, so we start at zero. Zero times grid side is, is zero. Y times grid size is zero. So we're at zero, zero. Then we move over an X and we say one times 20. So we're at position 20, zero, then 40, zero, then 60, zero, and so on and so forth, uh, all the way across and all the way down. And we're creating a rectangle of the size, grid size, grid size. So 20 by 20 rectangle. We're creating a perfect square every 20 pixels across and then every 20 pixels down. However, notice that um, the way that we're doing this here is every other square is actually being filled in with this particular rectangle. And that's because of this next line. What we're going to do is we're going to draw... And we're going to actually draw the rectangle, okay? And we're going to pass in the surface. Oops, hold on. I'm sorry. This needs to be dot rect. Uh, so draw dot rect is different than pi game dot rect. Uh, this is what's actually going to draw the surface for us. Uh, and then we're going to say pi game dot color. Uh, now you can use um, either one of the predefined colors uh, they if you go look at the pi game library there is a file in there called coloreddict.py that's the dictionary of all the predefined colors uh, i like to use those just because i don't have to think about it um, so we're going to use light slate gray and if you didn't look that up you would have no idea that that existed but uh, it's really easy to find in that file all the different colors they're all named pretty uh, pretty well. So what this is going to do is every other square, every even square, we're going to draw a, a perfect square that is uh, a light slate gray. So we're defining the pi game rect and then we're actually drawing it on the surface uh, using the rectangle function. Uh, and uh, right here we're passing in R which is the rectangle that we define here. Okay, So we're telling it draw a rectangle using this predefined pi game rect. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, now we need to draw the odd squares. We're going to do basically the same thing here. Pi game dot rect. And we're going to say exactly the same thing. X times uh, this part right here is identical. The line that's going to change is the next line. Grid size. And then we're going to pass in grid size by grid size. Okay. Now pi game dot draw dot rect surface again. Pi game dot color. Uh, let's go with a slate gray this time. This will give us a multi-shaded gray checkerboard pattern. Okay. So now we've created this function. And 
the next piece is to come down here uh, to our run function and uh, before we actually start our game loop let's go ahead and draw the function uh, draw this grid and we're going to pass in the surface that we define right above it and then uh, because we're clearing the screen every single frame uh, what we want to do before we actually uh, in between clock.tick and screen.blit on the surface we actually want to add everything we want to draw on the surface here so now we're going to say draw grid on the surface okay that's it that's all we have to do now let's go ahead and hit play and see what happens there you go now you have a slate gray and dark slate gray or light slate gray uh, grid pretty simple okay so now that we have a grid drawing on the screen let's actually make a game um, what we're gonna do now is we're going to stub out the three classes that we're going to use to actually represent our game and the world okay three things that we need here first we need a snake and as i said earlier you can use pass oh yeah we don't have to use the uh those if we're not putting anything in it at first so class snake we're going to pass past this and uh, class food pass over it and class world that's it those are the three classes that we're actually going to define here as you can imagine uh, snake is a representation of you as the player it's the snake that you're going to use to move around the screen food is the things that you eat as a snake and increase your score and world is a representation of the snake and the food on the world all the positions that are filled in uh, and it also has uh, the logic to intercept all the key presses for us okay so this is just going to be a container class that holds everything else so let's go ahead and define world here what we're going to do is we're going to take world and we're going to create our initialization our constructor And we're going to create self.snake. We're going to set that to the snake object. Self.food equals the food object. Okay. And once we've actually done those, uh, we can create a couple more uh, methods here. We're going to create an update method. We're not going to do anything in here right now. We're just going to have the update method here. And then we're going to create a draw method. And we need to pass in the surface so that we know what to draw on. Again, we're going to just pass over this until we need it. Uh, then, uh, as a convenience function, I'm going to add a way to grab the current score um, we're not going to actually store the score here in the world though we're going to store it with the snake itself since it's the thing that scores okay and finally we're going to create a handle keys function now we're going to do this a little differently than down below because uh, we already have an event handler and we're going to pass into this event handler um, the event that we intercept down below. So let's go ahead and do that. We have uh, a world, we initialize it with a snake and food, uh, and we're not doing anything else in here right now, but let's go ahead and start to set all of this up. So come back down to your run method and uh, in here we're going to define after we draw the grid for the first time we're going to set up our world object okay and inside of our event handler 
right here, we want to say if there's a Q press and it's not escape, we actually want the world to handle it. Okay? Down here, after our clock.tick, the next thing we're going to do is world.update. Now, as I said, that function right now isn't doing anything, but once we add all of this in here, uh, as we add in logic, we'll be able to run the game and see all of these things actually start to happen. Okay. So world.update gets called here. After we draw the grid, we want to draw the world. And that's pretty much it for right now. Okay. Um, later we can add some UI elements and have uh, a score being kept up in the top uh, top left of the screen so that we can see um, what the current score is for uh, that particular run of the game. Okay, But we won't add that right now. We'll, we'll worry about that later once we actually have a score being represented. Okay, so make sure you didn't break anything. Go ahead and hit play. This will pop up again. Um, take a second. And there you go. You see that everything looks exactly the same as it did now, but now we have this blank world object also updating inside of here. Okay. So let's exit out of here. Let's come back in and start to flush out our logic here. Let's create our snake and get it drawn. All right. Now, the snake is going to be the most complicated object of all of these, all right? Um, we're going to start with it, though, because uh, it's the thing that actually allows you to play. So we're going to remove the pass. We're going to create a def, init. We're going to set up a couple of variables in here that the snake needs to know about. The first thing it needs to know, how long is it? It starts at a length of 1. One square running around the board. As it eats things, that length will continue to grow over and over and over again. But when we start, we have a length of one. Then we have a score. This is the score that I was telling you about before. Um, what we can actually do now, now that we've defined the score in here, we can come down here uh, and in the score of the world, we can just uh, return that that score and that's all we need to know here all right so let's let's say uh self dot snake dot score and we're going to return this okay that's it we just return the score here as i said this is a convenience function uh, this will allow us to actually grab the score later when uh, we're trying to draw that on the screen okay um in fact this is probably a really good idea too draw it on the screen right now. Uh, we don't need... It'll just give us an incremental step forward. Okay. Let's go ahead and set up a font then. Uh, let's do that. Down here in the run function, uh, we have just a little bit more to set up. After we define the world, we can go ahead and set up our font. We're going to set up the system font. I'm going to use monospace. It's pretty plain and boring. You can use other fonts if you want to, but this one's usually installed on every system. Pretty easy to use. All right, so that's all we have to do for the font. We, we define it here, and then now we actually have to display it. So after uh, we draw the world, we're going to come right after here, and we're going to set up our text. Our text is going to equal the font rendering and we're going to say score and we're going to put in a placeholder here dot format and we're going to say world dot score and so line one by name I'm going to set the color Spinny Beach Ball of Doom. 
computer does not like recording this stuff, does it? Okay, set up the text. Now the last piece that we have to do, screen.blit, pass in the text, and pass in where we're going to draw it. We're going to put it up towards the top left, but not off the screen here. Okay, let's run this, see what it looks like. Here it comes. Oh, look at that. It's very tiny, but that's okay for now. Uh, we've got a small score of zero up in the top left. Look at that. We're getting closer and closer to a game. Now let's finish out our snake now that we have actually used that score value. Okay. All right. Uh, now we're going to start using uh, some of these convenient function convenience functions or uh, variables that we declared up above. Uh, this is where they're going to come in really useful. So we're going to say self.positions. Uh, positions is going to be an array. And inside of that array, we have every square that is filled uh, with our pieces of the snake. We start with a length of 1, and we're going to start in the center, which, as you recall, we defined right here above as being the center location. Okay. Now, when the game starts, it would be really, really, really boring if you started standing still. So, oh, we're going to use the random library here. Let's um, let's do random dot choice, and we're going to give it a choice of either up, down. left or right okay all right and you'll notice red squiggling line of doom here uh, this is because we haven't actually imported the only other thing we need in this game which is random there we go and now we set a random direction either up down left or right that's it that's our direction if you recall those are going to be a tuple an xy tuple of either zero negative one zero one negative one zero or one zero all right so that's what direction is going to end up being one of those four values okay now we want to draw our snake as a different color than the background so I'm going to set up another color object here and this time I'm going to go with dark green I like dark green so that's just the color I pick uh, Feel free to experiment. Go, as I said, go look up c o l o r d i c t dot pi, and that will uh, have a list of all 256 predefined colors for you. Okay. We need one more color here because I played around with this before, uh, and it looks much much better if you give all the snake blocks. A little outline. Now we're going to pick the same color as one of the squares on the background so it the outline itself blends into the background um, but it will help really define for you and help show you how long the snake actually is. Okay it just looks better. Uh, you can play with this outline when we actually draw it and see what it looks like uh, but I think you'll agree it looks pretty good with the with the outline around it. Okay, now we need to define some functions besides the constructor. Uh, first thing we need to know is where is the head? Okay, and the head is always going to be the very first member of our array, of our positions array. Okay, so all we have to do is return self.position0. So this is a convenience method again. We don't want to type self.position0 every time we want to get the head position. So that's how we do it there. The next thing we're going to have to do is allow the player to turn. Okay. Um, now, uh, we need to pass into the turn the actual direction we want to go. Uh, so what we're going to do is I'm going to say this is dir, D-I-R. And uh, we need a little bit of logic in here. Um, 
so what we're going to check is if our length is greater than one okay um, so if we're not just starting out and the direction of zero dir zero times negative one and dir one times negative one uh, so we set those equal to self dot direction all right this needs a little bit of explaining uh, it may not make a lot of sense right off the bat but basically what we're doing is we're saying the direction that gets uh, passed into the turn function we're going to take the x times negative one and the y times negative one what that is going to give us is uh, the reverse direction it's going to give us the opposite direction that we're heading right now and so what we're checking is to make sure the direction uh, that we want to head is not in the opposite direction that we are currently heading. The reason for this is if you did that, you instantly die. So we just want to say uh, return here. Okay. We don't want to allow the player to even have that option to turn back in on themselves. All right. Then otherwise, all we have to do is set the direction to whatever gets passed into this function. Okay. Let's see. Shadows built in named dir. Oh yeah, that's probably let's uh let's call this. So as I said, you, you get to see some fancy stuff here. We're gonna refactor this name a little bit. We don't want to shadow anything that already exists. So what we're gonna call this is new under oh new underscore dir and we're going to refactor all of those places look at that look how fancy that is i changed the name to new dir here and it changed in these three places where i've already used it i know i get excited about the stupidest stuff but i think it's neat all right so here we go let's create our move function let's actually move ourselves um this is going to be the majority of the logic in the whole game right here is how are we going to move around all right so we want our current location to be get head position okay we're going to find where are we currently and we're going to say x and y equals self dot direction uh, this is a decomposition of a tuple what this allows us to do is to extract the zero and one location of the tuple being passed in here into the x and y variables okay then we're going to say our new position is equal to the x of our current plus the x we grabbed from the direction times the grid size okay we want to we want to move that many places in the X and then our Y position is going to be the current Y position plus direction times grid size all right our new position is going to be take where we currently are and add one square in the direction that we're heading that's it one square in the direction we're heading that's all we have to do okay now we do have to do a little bit of checking here okay um, before we do that checking we're going to come down here and define a new function that we're going to use in that check I'm gonna call it die because this is what happens when we run into stuff we die okay and all death means in this game is we reset the length to one We reset our position back to the center. We're going to set the direction to stop. Uh, now I like to set it to stop here just because it gives me a little a half a second to breathe before the game restarts. 
Uh, if you were building a real game, you would probably transition into a new screen that said game over, you've lost, uh, would you like to retry or whatever. Um, we're not going to go that far in this tutorial. So all we're going to do is just stop moving and we're going to reset the score. Okay. Now that we've done that, let's come back up to the move function and finish it out. At this point, we need to check the conditions for losing. So we need to take the new position, take its X, and if its new position is less than zero, okay, which means it's moved off of the screen on uh, the left side of the screen, or the new position of zero is greater than or equal to the screen width. And we use greater than or equal to because we want it to, as soon as we cross the right barrier of the screen, we want to end. Or new position y is less than zero. Or new position y is greater than or equal to the screen height. All right, so all we're doing is checking the bounds of the screen. Did we go off to the left, the right, the top, or the bottom? If we have, bye. If we haven't, we'll do an elif here. Elif, let's check the length. If the length of positions is greater than two and new position is in self dot positions anywhere after the head, we're going to die. All right, uh, this might be a uh, new for you self dot positions to colon uh, inside the the brackets there to colon means start at the uh, second position and run back okay uh, so it's inclusive and it runs all the way to the end of the array we want to say are we intersecting with any of the positions in this array so if we've intersected with ourselves we're going to die okay and then, as the final arm of this, we're going to say else self dot positions dot insert. And we're going to say insert into position zero, the new position. So we're pushing onto the front of the array, our current, our newest position. So we're adding a new element to the front of the array. If the length of positions is greater than self dot length, okay, then we want to say self dot positions dot pop. Okay. All right. So this last two lines, if we're saying our position length is greater uh, the length of the actual positions array is longer than our registered length, then we want to remove the last piece at the end of the array. This is how we make it look like we're sliding across the screen. We're adding a new position to the front of the array, and we're popping the old one off of the back. And therefore, everything in the middle stays exactly where it is and never has to be uh, touched until it falls off the back of the array. Okay? That is pretty straightforward and simple. Hopefully you agree. Um, all right. Oops. There's an error here because I said self dot positions of center. There we go. There we go. We equals. So this is what happens when we move and this is what happens when we die. Uh, the final piece we have to do in here uh, to put all of the snake together is now we have to say draw 
on the surface. And all we have to do to draw is say for P in self dot positions. So for each member of the positions array, we're going to create a pi game dot rect. And we're going to pass in, remember this is two tuples here. We're going to pass in this elements P0 and P1. And then we're going to draw it grid size by grid size. And we take pi game dot draw dot correct. And we're going to draw on the surface using self dot color rect r. And this is the part where I said it just makes it look a little nicer. Try commenting out this line to see what I'm talking about. But surface self dot outline color. draw the exact same square outline color, but we only want it to have a width one. So by default, width is set to zero here on the draw.rect. And um, by setting it to a width of one, we're actually giving it a width and saying, just draw the one pixel wide border all the way around this rectangle. Okay, so this is how you create outlines right here. All right. That's it. That is the draw function. So now we have the ability to turn. We have the ability to get our head. We have the ability to move. We can die and we can draw ourselves. Okay. So let's move down here to the world uh, and fill in some of this. Uh, we're going to create the update function and we're going to say self dot snake dot move. So that's what we're going to do every time we update. Every time we draw, we're now going to say self dot snake dot draw on the surface. Okay. Uh, we already have our score being handled and let's make our keys work. If event dot type equals pi game dot key down. Now we technically already know that it is a key down since it only gets passed into here when the key down the key is being pressed. We just want to double check here and make sure that the event is what we expect it to be. If event dot key is equal to pi game dot k up. Okay, so if we press up, what we're going to do is we're going to say self dot snake dot turn up. Now you can probably imagine what the rest of this is going to look like, but I'm going to type it out anyway. Event dot key equals pi game dot k down self dot snake dot turn. Oh, look at that. We're going to turn down. Element event dot key equals pi game dot k left cell dot snake dot turn left lf event dot key equals pi game dot k down self dot snake dot turn down that's it okay now we've created a key handler a draw method an update method in our world, which we've already filled in in the run down here. Now the only thing left to do is to hit play and see what happens. Look at this. I can hit keys and I move around. Oh, I do have a problem. Uh, when I hit right, nothing happens. Why? Ah, that would be why. Okay, that right. You guys all probably caught that as I was doing it. Uh, ha, ha. Okay, let's fix that. So we've got up, down, left, right. Let's actually make sure I'm doing what I'm supposed to do here. 
Now let's try. Look at this. We've nearly got a complete game. Now you notice when I'm one single wide, I can flip directions left and right. We'll verify once we start to grow that we can't move any other direction. So there we go. We can move around and we die. We show up back in the center. I think this is looking great. All right. So the very last thing we need to do. Now we need to make food and grow. So let's fill in this class and call it a day. We're going to set up our net. There's only a couple of things we need in here. We need to set up a position. And we're going to set the position to 0, 0 as the initial position of food. Now, we will randomly generate new positions whenever we generate each new piece of food. Okay? Self.position equals 0, 0. Self.color. We're going to set our color. Um, let's do dark goldenrod 3. Because I like the third dark goldenrod. <laughs> you just got to go look at the file to see what that value actually means. But it's a nice color for an apple, yellowish apple. Our outline color is going to be the same as above. We're going to say slate gray. Okay. And then the very last thing we're going to do here, we've already set our position to zero, but we're going to self dot randomize position. Okay. So every time we generate food, it's going to randomize itself. Then what does this actually do? Randomize position. We need to do uh, three things in here. First, we need to set up a random X position. And this is going to be random dot and we're using that random that random import again, rand integer between zero and this is the only other place in this entire thing where we need to cast something as an integer. So we're going to cast it here. It's expect the type that's expected in random int is an integer. So we're going to cast grid width minus one. We don't want it to go off the grid. So we need to stay, make sure we stay within the bounds of the grid width. Okay. So that's our random X. Our random Y is going to be the exact same thing. Uh, if I could spell, this would be so great. Random dot rand int between zero and grid height minus one. Exactly the same thing with height instead of width. So now we have a random X and a random Y. All we have to do is set our position times grid size exactly like we do with our snake pieces. We need to multiply this by grid size so it ends up in the right place. And that's it. Now we've got random positions here. Grid height, grid width. There we go. And the final thing we need to do for the food is draw it on the surface. And you can say pygame.rect. Set it to self.position of zero. Self.position of one. And then we're going to give it a size of grid size by grid size. There we are. That is our rect. Then we have to exactly like above on the snake, pygame.draw.littlerect with our surface. And we're going to set self.color and we're going to draw the rectangle R. Then we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to draw an outline. We're going to give it a width of one. All right, that will start drawing the fruit. Uh, the only 
only, only, only thing left to do is to fix the world update function. Because this is where we determine if the food that we are drawing is being eaten. And we say if self.snake.getHeadPosition is equal to self.food.position self.snake.length plus equals one self.snake.score plus equals one and self.food.randomize position. That's it. We're gonna if our snake's head is on the food, we're gonna eat it by increasing the snake length by one, increasing our score by one, and then randomizing the food's position on the board. Do we think this is gonna work? Let's see. Run the game. Nope, not gonna work. You know why? I lied. There was one more thing we needed to do. <laughs> uh, it helps if we actually also draw dot food dot draw on the surface. So we have to draw the food as well. <laughs> that should be it. That should be all it takes uh, to finish this. Not bad. Let's play this game and see how it runs. Oh, look at that. I'm growing as I eat food. Oh, I died. Oh, I died. I'm really bad at this game, but it's a fun game to make and a fun game to play. That's it. Hopefully you guys learned something great out of this. I uh, got a nice introduction into Pygame. Uh, next time we'll probably build a game that's a little bit more complicated than this, but I think this is a great start. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel uh, and give this a great big thumb mashing up on that button down there. Let people know that this is a great video. Thank you all. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.